Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Let's continue with our NMAX syllabus. Hopefully you guys already watched my previous part 1 video under form 4 chapter 1.1 function. So if you haven't watched it yet, I will highly recommend you to watch it first before you watch this one. I will put the link at the description box below and let's get started. So last video, I already teach you guys a very basic knowledge of what is function. So this is actually what we did last video. So today, we're going to continue with question 3. So let's look through it. So first, on these particular questions, they provide you an arrow diagram. A diagram with arrow, we always call it arrow diagram. So arrow diagram, the starting, we always call it object. The ending, we always call it image. Based on my previous video, I taught you guys that object, we always call it X. So image, usually I call it FX. Or it can be GX, HX, any other alphabet, but based on the question. This question, they call it F, that's why I mentioned it that F as FX. So next, these questions also provide me the FX equation here. Let me state it out for you. So they try to tell me FX is A over X minus B. So, so far, this is what they provide and look at the let's look at the requirement A. So, in A, they say, find the value of A and B. So, how many unknowns you have to find? Two. How many information you should have then? Two as well. Remember, two unknown, you must always have two information. So, how do I have two information? Let's see where the A and B come from, shall we? So, I realize the A and B come from the equation. So, guys, based on last video, you should know that usually the equation, which is the bridge, okay? So, usually they will give you a complete equation. Then, they will give you either the starting, ask for the ending, or give you the ending, ask for the starting. But this time round, things change. They actually ask for the relation. E, they ask for the relation, isn't it as a return? They should give you the starting and the ending so that you can find back the relation, to complete the relation. So guys, they should give me the starting and the ending, which is actually the object and the image. So do they provide me? Yes, based on the top. Other than the equation, isn't it they draw me the arrow diagram? Isn't it the first one we know 3 linked to negative 5? So guys, don't always expect they will draw you arrow diagram. Sometimes they will give you ordered pairs, sometimes they will give you Cartesian graph, but no matter what, they just try to give you the object and the image. So object is 3. So isn't it object we always write inside the bracket? So 3 is the object, it passes through a bridge called F, so isn't it beside the 3, we will write F. After they pass through, what they become, isn't it they become the image of negative 5. So here will be negative 5. So based on the yellow color one, I can write F3 equals to negative 5. Then student will feel like, teacher, how you sure that you're going to write like that? Let me ensure you whether I write it correctly or not, okay? So first, always when you write fuck function, isn't it? It's always fx, gx, hx, and that explain that inside the bracket is always alphabet x, where I already mentioned x is the object. So now my object is 3, that's the reason in between that, the bracket is a 3. And the bridge name you cross exactly called f, that's why I write f at the side here, because that is what you cross, right? So after you cross, what image you get? Negative 5. And image called what? Image called fx. So do you realize my fx now? is equivalent to negative 5. So that explains that I actually write it correctly. So you can write the first one, obviously you can write the second one as well, which is negative 5 linked to negative 1 under the bridge of F again. So let's again write for you. The starting is negative 5. So the object is negative 5. I write inside the bracket. The bridge I cross called F. So I write beside F. So at the end, what is the image I get? Negative 1. Isn't it? This is how you write it out. A lot of questions, a lot of exam type questions require this particular knowledge for you to write this out. So you must master the way of writing this out, okay? Hopefully, you, and I hope that you guys already understand it. So I repeat, object right inside, the bridge that you cross right outside, and then your image right at another side, okay? So with that, let's start to do it. So I have two information, I should get two equations. First, negative 5 is negative 5. Cannot do anything on that. So how about this F3? Some student will open bracket and write 3F. I hope you didn't do that because this is a function. It's not for you to open bracket and become 3F because they are not a tight relation. Then how do I do it? I hope you guys know that this F3 original name called FX based on what I wrote on top. So FX, isn't it? I have FX equation up here, which is A over X minus B. Correct? You see, I didn't create myself, I just copied from the top. But is it correct if I just write like that? No. 
Why not? Because based on the last lessons, last video, you guys should know that fx if, okay, let's say if, fx equivalent to x plus 2. And the questions, let's say they want to find f0. When they want to find f0, do you guys write, do you guys still write x plus 2? No. Because if the x, you write 0 there, isn't it the x here, you guys should also change the x based on the questions and become 0 as well. So I'll give you another example. What if you are f, k? Can you see that? So here, will you still write x plus 2? No. Because again, you look at the questions, you know the x already changed to k. So isn't it on this particular same spot, your x will also change to k as well. Correct? If you understand this, then we come back to these questions and you should know that now your x becoming 3. So if your x becoming 3 is in this particular spot, the x shouldn't continue write x. You should also write 3 inside because fx, that one should be 3. So I rub it off. Isn't it on this particular spot, I should put 3 instead because on based on the top, it's not an x. It's actually a 3. So with that, let's continue move it. Divide move up times. Remember to move the whole thing, never move partial of it. Put a bracket. Negative 5 times 3, negative 50. Negative 5 times negative b, positive 5b. Isn't it just like that? And until this moment, don't tell me you move it around. you got alphabet A and B, got two unknown. No matter how you move, you will start with two unknown. So that means this is only my equation one. I should do some substitution later. So let's see another one. Negative one, still negative one. How about this F negative five? I repeat again, don't tell me open bracket and negative five F, they are function. So how do I do this function? F negative five, full name called FX, correct? fx equation isn't it exactly up here, which is a over x minus b. Can you see that? Again, is it correct I write this? No, because they never say call fx. They say they call it f negative 5. So if the question is actually f negative 5, isn't it your particular x should also change to negative 5. So let's erase it off and change to negative 5 instead. Can you see that? So divide move up time. So divide move up the whole thing move up become time relation. Let's try to expand it. Negative negative positive negative negative positive. Isn't it just like that? A perfect equation too. So now I think I can use substitution. Isn't it now you guys can sub one into two. So I can sub the a inside the a column here. So the a isn't it become negative fifteen plus five b equivalent to five plus b. Substitution, that means you will replace it by that particular equation. I hope you guys understand. After I sub inside, you guys realize now my questions don't have A anymore but only left B. So only left one unknown, definitely you guys can get the answer. So B and B combined together, nothing in front is 1. Plus 1B, one move there, minus 1B. 5 minus 1, 4B. Negative 15, move it over, plus 15, 20. Times 4, move there, there by 4. Ta da You guys get B equivalent to 5. Please don't stop here because this question, other than finding B, they also want to find A. So how do we find A? Sub back. So you can sub back to equation 1 or equation 2. I like equation 2 because it looks more simple. So I sub back to my equation 2 here. So I sub inside and I get my A answer, 10. Hopefully you guys understand because these are the most basic exam type questions. And let's continue look at B. So the question B, they say, find the value of x. So guys, this question want me to find x, okay? They say, when the function f is undefined. I hope you realize a brand new word, undefined. What is the meaning of undefined? Undefined means max error. Max error, that means no answer. So in what situation you will have no answer? So I have a lot of things for me to explain about this. But the first thing is, I need you to know that Talking about this undefined, okay, in the back of this particular chapter, you must learn how to write undefined for all the equations that you stated in the future. So in these particular questions, do you realize the equation beside they have this x not equivalent to b? This x not equivalent to b exactly is an undefined concept. Let me put purple color for you. So these two things exactly they have relation. So actually, when they say x cannot be b, that is because every number you put inside, you will come out an answer, except b. If b, you put it inside, it will become max error. Maybe I say like that, you don't really understand what I say. Never mind. I will give you an example. Let's look at this, yeah? So for example, okay, 
shouldn't confuse you. Let's say fx. So let's say fx is 3 or equivalent to 3 over x. For this one, they will tell you x not equivalent to 0. How I know x not equal to 0? x not equal to 0? Let me explain for you, yeah? So they say x cannot be 0. So it means that all the number you try to put inside, you will get a number except 0. Let me prove to you what happened if I put 0 inside. So guys, let's see, yeah? I sub 0 inside the x column. Isn't it become 3 divided by 0? So 3 divided by 0 is what majority of you guys will tell me 0. But it's actually not. If you don't trust me, you can press calculator. 3 divided by 0 for your calculator. You exactly can see the word max error, which is undefined. Can you guys see that? And here come to a theory and a knowledge that you will always get max error when your denominator is 0. Please understand, if the top part 0, it won't be undefined because 0 divided by 3, you can try to press calculator, is actually still 0. So the problem is never the top part, but the bottom part. And the bottom part is actually the denominator part. So, for you to learn to write this part, x not equals to, you must learn how to write x not equals to because at the back of this chapter, you must have this knowledge, okay? So for you to write x not equals to 0, it's always just look at the denominator. So always remember, the denominator always cannot equivalent to 0 because if the bottom is 0, it will be max error. That's why I can show you, right? x not equals to 0. Haven't fully understand? Never mind. Let me give you the next example. gx equals to um, 2x over x minus 1. Okay? So this one, I also need to write x not equal. So x will not equivalent to what for now? Don't tell me teacher still zero. It's not every time zero. It will change according to the questions. So I repeat, always when we talk about this x not equals to, which is the max error part, our concern is always the denominator part. So isn't it the denominator part always cannot equivalent to zero based on what I told you, right? Because the denominator becomes zero, then it will be max error. So minus one move there over become plus one. So do you guys realize it means x cannot be one? Just in case you don't trust me, let me show you what happened if I sub 1 inside. So if I sub the x become 1, I sub inside here, isn't it 1 minus 1? 1 minus 1, do you guys realize bottom will be 0? And 2 there by 0, it will be undefined. Isn't it like that? I just double confirm for you that, seriously, this is how you know what number cannot sub inside because if you sub 1 inside, it will be max error. Give you the next example to let you further understand it. So let's say x squared minus 2x over 5x minus 3. Mm, plus 3. Okay? So guys, don't because I changed the top part, you feel very confused. I hope you understand the top part don't have any relation for the undefined part. You just, con your, con your only concerns will be the bottom part. So isn't it, I repeat, for you to have max error, it's always your denominator cannot equivalent to 0. Correct? So isn't it plus 3? Move it up here. Plus 3, isn't it move it over? Become minus 3. Times 5, move it over. Isn't it become divided by 5? And just like that, I realise that it means for this particular equation, my x cannot be negative 3 over 5. So hopefully all my explanation here, now you understand. So let's look back to these questions. This question, they actually ask me, me what x value will make the function f max error? So first, for you to know max error part, you must first having function f. So where is function f? Function f, that means fx equation. Do you guys already have the fx equation? Yes. Before you start, is any of these questions already give me the fx equation, which is a over x minus b. Correct? So guys, is this equation a complete one now? No. Because of why? Be why? Because of the unknown a and b. So A and B, do I already found the answer? Yes. Isn't it previously in A, I found out B is 5, A is 10. Let's start accordingly. A is 10, B is 5. Correct? And I repeat, whenever we talk about max error part, our only concern is the denominator. Isn't it the denominator always cannot equivalent to 0? So negative 5 move, to, move it over become positive 5. So do you realize it means that you should write x not equivalent to 5? Why x cannot be 5? That means I should write uh, x not equivalent to 5. That means if x becomes 5, it will be max error, correct? 
guys don't stop here you stop here you didn't get that only that one marks for this requirement because this question didn't ask you x cannot be what they're actually asking you what x number will make it max error i think by now all of you know that five will make it max error because you know that x cannot be five that means all the number you sub they will have some other number coming out except five five if you sub inside it will be max error so now they're asking you another way of what number sub inside will make it max error five is the one so just like that and then you guys will get the one marked this are only worth one marked i hope you understand it by now and let's look at the next one question four which is a sketch graph questions you guys always very weak on sketch graph questions so i hope i can teach until you understand it i'll try my best so let's look at a okay so guys they want me to sketch this equation fx don't ask me why uh. i just copy from the top fx equals to modulus negative 2 plus 3 modulus so before i start i hope you guys know what is modulus that two line called modulus yeah if you not not too sure what is modulus my previous video already topped it so you can watch back the previous video so guys modulus actually means let me write here for you modulus it means that positive number come out from modulus will still be positive then negative number come out from the modulus it will still be positive so conclusion all the number come out from modulus will be positive okay so before i start to sketch it okay they say sketch uh, okay first i need to give you a guidance of how the graph later will look like okay so in chapter one when they want to uh, sketch function whenever they want to sketch function okay 99.99% of the questions will have this modulus okay i never see ones which is don't have so they always have this modulus so with this modulus definitely your graph will look like this okay i just try to show you yeah because guys remember in lower form you learn that a straight line equation always called y equals to mx plus c so look at these questions do you realize it really looked like y equals to mx plus c just that they added a modulus can you see that so that means uh, this one supposedly is a straight line doesn't mean it must look like that but i should try to give you a, an example so let's say a straight line that look like that okay but the problem is they add on a modulus and as what i told you just now modulus means positive remain positive so do you realize the top part of x axis is actually positive so it will remain on top and the negative which is the bottom part will also become positive so isn't it the bottom part will reflect up and going like that so i rub off the bottom one and i hope you guys know that so that's there's the reason that later on later on when we sketch out the functions with a modulus they will always look like a v shape so can you guys see like a reverse nike shape like that so this is actually a v-shaped graph okay so later on you guys should draw a v-shaped graph and the point is will you draw a huge v-shaped graph no why you won't because they give you a restriction they say domain domain is actually the object side so they want your domain which is the object object which is the axis so they say the axis is just from negative one until five so you won't overdraw it you will just from negative one draw until five so guys how do i draw it out based on lower form whenever you want to sketch graph isn't it you cannot just simply sketch it out you're gonna find some coordinates which is find some points so for me to find some points normally i will create a table okay and coordinate usually have x also have y correct but i hope you realize the equation don't even have the alphabet y and based on the previous video you guys should know y and fx is the same thing because in this chapter they don't call it y they call it fx instead so i hope you guys know they're actually same thing so now x and fx so how do you guys find it out student tends to always make this mistake where where they say the domain is from negative one to five right so student usually will find negative one zero one two three four five i think maybe i bet that this is what you're thinking for now as well but guys will i find all this no because okay why no they have two points first point you cannot find all this because what if the question want to find negative 100 until 100 is it possible for you to find out all the whole number no because there will be have a lot of it so you cannot really cover all of them and it's very time consuming as well so you shouldn't cover all of them because what if they have a lot and most important is negative one until five actually not only include whole number in between them they also have decimal like for example 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 so if you only find whole number then you actually miss out those who are decimal so 
for me to avoid those problem you no need to find so many points just find those important one which one is those important one first you're gonna find the starting next you will find the ending because when you draw the v-shaped graph at least you need to know where you start where you end am i right so the starting isn't it negative one the ending isn't it five not by guessing, I just look at the domain they provide, negative 1 to 5, I know that the starting is negative 1, the ending is 5. So the starting, the ending. Next two, you're going to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So guys, this is y-intercept. And this one is x-intercept. And you shouldn't feel very surprised for these two words because this is not a brand new word, you learn it in lower form. Just in case you guys forget, let's say, let's talk through it. So guys, this is always a axis. This is a y axis, right? When you draw a straight line that pass through them, so let's say this is point A, this is point B. Do you guys still remember a point on the y axis? We always call it y intercept. And y intercept always have this characteristic that x equivalent to zero. Then a point on x axis, we always call it x intercept. And x intercept characteristic will be y equals to zero. So there go, I put 0 on top and 0 at the bottom. I hope you guys remember all this. I write here a bit. X, Y intercept, X equals 0. X intercept, Y equals 0. Can you see I only find those important points? So guys, let's try to find it out. So how do I find it out? You know that now you guys already have the X. How do you guys find the Y? Which is how you guys find the FX. So then this is the equations that they provide you for this particular questions. So all we need to do is sub it in. Sub it in, I will use grey colour pen because actually teacher won't even count marks for this working but I just try to show you the working so I use grey pen, okay? So guys, first one, my x is negative 1 based on here. So I sub negative 1 inside, so the x become negative 1. Isn't it this x become negative 1, this particular spot, the x also become negative 1. So how you guys understand it? I sub negative 1 inside. So if not too sure, you can press calculator. Negative 2 times negative 1, positive 2. 2 plus 3, 5. So guys, 5 is a number, right? It's a positive number. Positive number come out from modulus become positive. I already stated it on top. Is any positive number come out positive? So it's 5. So let me state it here, 5. Next one, let's sub the 0. x becomes 0. Same thing, f the x becomes 0. Is any the x here, you guys will sub 0 as well. Hopefully you guys understand, I still sub back to this equation. So, negative 2 times 0, 0. 0 plus 3, isn't it 3? So, 3 is a positive number. Positive number come out, is still positive. Isn't it 3? Got it. 3. Next one. Next one, let's see. I try to find the 5. Guys, I skip this one first, okay? I try to find all the x value first. I try to find all the y value first. So, x equals to 5. So, now, all the x column, I will sub 5 inside. So negative 2 times 5, negative 10. Negative 10 plus 3, negative 7. Negative number, based on what you stated, what I taught you on the previous video, negative come up from modulus will become positive 7. So isn't it here will be a 7. I hope you guys understand it. And the last one, the last one is about this. This is not x equivalent to 0. This one is fx equals 0. I hope you guys can see it nicely. So the last one will be fx becomes 0. So fx becomes 0, so when you sub inside, the fx, which is the left-hand side, will become 0. So it's only 0 equals to modulus negative 2x plus 3 modulus. Can I see this? So I hope you guys still have the knowledge about modulus. Don't tell me, teacher, plus 3 come out, become plus 3. No, nope, you cannot come out at all. Do you guys still remember, based on the previous video, modulus only apply for positive number. It must be. In, no, only apply for number, not must be positive number, but number. So guys, it must be number, but not unknown. Every time, if there's unknown inside, none of them can come out from the modulus. So when you look at this modulus, do you guys realize you have unknown x inside? So none of them can come, come out. You cannot plus 3, move there over minus 3, cannot at all. Then, instead of moving around, you should try to make the modulus disappear. How do I do so? I will move the modulus to the other side become plus minus on the previous video i got explained on this you can try to look it back so this is what we i write so plus minus zero that is you should have two answer one plus zero one minus zero but guys if it's plus five minus five that it make a difference but plus zero and minus zero make no difference they are still zero 
So plus minus zero is just zero. And let's try to find back the x answer. Negative 2x move there, positive 2x. Times 2 move there, divided by 2. I hope all of you get x equivalent to 3 over 2. So isn't it here, I will get 3 over 2. And 3 over 2 in decimal is actually 1.5. So to make your life easier later, I will just put 1.5. So guys, with this, I realized I got quite a lot of coordinate. And let me write nicely in coordinate form for you. First one, x negative 1, y is 5. Second one, x is 0, y is 3. Third one, x is 1.5, y is 0. Just in case you wonder, I just copy from the top. So the last one, isn't it x is 5, y is 7. So with that, now I can take a ruler and try to start to draw it out. So isn't it you guys will draw an x axis, you guys will draw a y axis. Can you see that? So origin put 0, x axis put x, y axis don't put y, put fx. Remember this question, they call it fx. So my domain is from negative 1 until 5. Negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Isn't it the weak part is from negative 1 to 5? So will you overdraw it? No. Because the questions already say your x will be from negative 1 to 5. So I exactly only draw from negative 1 to 5. Hopefully you guys can see that. So next, next is what? Next is the height part. So guys, the height, based on the y number that I see so far, highest number I can see is 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Just draw a reasonable dif uh, size difference between them, okay? Because you no need to use a graph paper for a sketch questions. Only a draw questions or plot question use graph paper. Sketch, you just usually you will just draw in a paper one questions or full sketch paper two, okay? So guys, this is how you guys sketch it out. So let's start from the first point. First point is negative 1, 5. That means my x will be, the width will be negative 1, the height will be 5. So I realize 5 is here. Do you realize negative 1, 5 is a spot on here? How I show? Because my x will be negative 1, the height will be 5. So do you guys realize this is my first point? Hopefully you guys can see the green color one. Second one. Second one, 0, 3. So guys, the x will be 0. So do you guys realize the x will be 0 and the height will be 3? So do you realize 0, 3 will actually located on the y-axis? 0 and 3. That's the reason it's y in the set. Next one, 1 1.50. So on the weak part, this is 1, this is 2, it's only right in between will be 1.5. So 1.5 weak, height will be 0. That's why it's on the floor. So 1.50, done again. And the last one, 5, 7. So it's only 5 weak, height will be 7. 5 is here, 7 is exactly this height here. It's only 5, 7 located here. Okay, you see, 5, 7. That's why I draw it there. Hopefully you guys understand it so far. So do you realize I have four points? I just try to find out. I just draw all the four points out using a cross, correct? So guys, don't just draw four cross and end there. These questions never say they only got four points. Why do I say so? Because isn't it their domain? They never say negative 1, 0, 1 1.5 and 5. They actually say negative 1 until 5. Negative 1 until 5, that means every single small little number in between them also got points, also included, correct? So, all this point that you have now, take a ruler and start to connect them together. And do you guys remember, based on what I told you just now, you will definitely get a V-shaped graph. And hula, I really got a V-shaped graph. Hopefully you guys realize that. See that? That is a V-shaped graph and I already explained why. So, I hope you guys understand A and look at the last part, which is B. Always sketch graph questions, they will love to ask you the B part where they say state the range. Guys, what's the meaning of range? Range is actually the image side. So do you guys realize object side is the x-axis, image side is the y-axis. So you guys should look at the vertical side. So they say state the range of fx for the corresponding given domain. So guys, how do I find the range answer? So that means now they say state the range of fx, right? I should look at fx. Hope you guys can understand it. So I will look at the vertical part instead of horizontal. Because horizontal is object, vertical is image, correct? So the vertical part, a lot of students, they will write 7, 5, 3, 0. Will I write only these four? No. Because I repeat again. The moment they say negative 1 until 5, you know that every single inch in between negative 1 to 5, all the number included. So it means your range answer should have more than 0, 3, 5, 7. Then how do you guys write it out? So impossible for you to write out each and every one because 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7, 0, 3, 5, 7 is not the only number because in between them, 
they will have a lot of points. Just in case you guys don't understand, I repeat again, yeah. I not only have four points, even though I only draw four points, but right after I connect them together, it's only every single inch of my straight line will have points. It's not necessary for you, it's not even necessary for you to draw all this small little cross. I just try to draw you across and try to tell you there's so many points there. So since there's so many points there, that means your FX value will more than 0, 3, 5, 7. So guys, if there are so many points, impossible for you to write out each and every one of them, it's fine. You can actually just write the range out. So how do we write a range out? So guys, look at the V-shape. So the V-shape, the highest part you touch is here. Do you realize the highest part, highest part that you touch is number 7? And the V-shape graph, isn't it the lowest part that you touch is here, which is exactly 0. So you know that, that means my answer will be in between 0 to 7. So instead of write out one by one, you can write fx will be from 0 to 7. Am I right? So fx will be bigger and equals to 0, smaller and equals to 7. Isn't it? I just write like that. I will cover every single small little number in between 0 to 7. Where do you realize my answer also look like? whatever they provide for the domain which is actually a range answer so hopefully you guys understand it so if you have any questions please let me know please comment and let me know if you like my method of teaching um please like and share and subscribe yeah subscribe is the word right there so guys so see you on the next one on the next video i think i'm gonna teach you inverse function first okay see you bye bye ta-ta